So yeah, first one should be a nice easy one. I always say that and then jinx myself. This is a rear USB port replacement on a PS4 Pro. It should be a nice easy one. I am hoping that the computer doesn't crap out on me. Because it's been crashing. Hey, Joseph. Thank you, mate. Thank you, dude. Right. I've got to stretch this because I haven't, I haven't got a power supply cable for these. Uh, well, I haven't got one plugged in, so... Um, yeah, I'm just going to turn this on. I have already looked and there's no shorty pins on it. So I'm just going to turn it on and just make sure it turns on just to cover my own back before I actually get into it. I don't want to take it all apart, fix the USB port and then it don't turn on and I'll, I'll question whether it's me or not. So there we go. I've got a white light. Um, everything is turning on and working fine. I actually did mess up yesterday. I did a HDMI port on a Series X and had a random twitch in my arm and crashed into the ESD I see. I had to reboot it. But it is what it is. So yeah, this is or well, should be fairly straightforward. It's a uh, rear USB port replacement. So let's see if I can get that. Focus you bastard. Oi. There you go. So, yeah, obviously, USB port's damaged on the back. So, that's going to need replacing. And customers said it also needs a service as well. It's actually fairly clean. I'll say it's quite clean, and then a load of dust falls out. Uh, it's not clean there. Right, let me just go and blast this with some air. Bear with me a second. You probably don't give a damn about what I've got to say, but just hear me out for a minute, all right? We all know that those sweaty little douchebags with cheesy fingers, living in the mom's basement, drinking Red Bull and simping over TikTok losers are going to break the console. And you and I both know that you're too cheap to buy off eBay, you're too impatient to wait for AliExpress and you're just about smart enough to avoid Amazon completely. You could admit it, because I'm exactly the same. That's why I started my online store, consolefix.shop. I'll sell every part you'll need to fix the Xbox One, Series S, Series X, PS4, PS5 and Nintendo Switch consoles. So why not give me the money instead of some random dude on eBay? At least if I have it, you know it's not going to waste on some stupid thing like promoted eBay listings or food for the kids or something. If you give me your money instead, I promise I'll use it on useful things like buying views on TikTok. So before you decide to go to one of the more popular sites and line the pockets of some fat cat loser, take a look at my online store. Check out the link in the video description or the top pin comment and get 10% off any order over £25 during checkout. Alright, now you can go back to watching this douchebag on YouTube trying to fix something. You can't say stuff like that on an average, dude. You're not my dad, dude. Don't tell me what to do. That's what you think, Phil. Wait, what? Mom? Yeah, this is going to be an NBA 001. Um... Very likely, um, given the fact that the power supply is the older generation. You suggest any YouTube channels about electronic repair. Um, in terms of learning, I would say um, Northridge Fix, Lewis Rossman, Northwest Repair, Steve B. Uh, there's a few others, but I don't have them to hand um, off the top of my head. There are quite a few very good channels for learning. Electronics repair. Um, oh, there's not, Learn electronics repair. There's a channel literally called that. Uh, my mate Vince as well. My mate Vince really does go into a lot of detail when it comes to you know the fault finding process and his thought process and stuff. Obviously, my mate Vince he doesn't consider himself a technician or anything like that. He's just a you know everyday Joe Bob uh, have a go here old dad who likes to fix stuff. Um, and nine, out of t nine times out of ten, he's successful. He's a lot smarter than he makes on. Let's put it that way. Uh, little recommendation with these, especially these NVA 001s, because there's no structural support on the connector. When you take out the power supply, don't undo it from there. Move that wire out of the way. And undo it from that side. Easy as. And then you're not going to damage the connector. Pro tip there. You can have that one for free. Right. So, I'm going to move the board over the edge of the table like that. And I'm going to remove that USB port 
from underneath the board because it's easier. This is the port. And if you look at the inside of it, obviously very, very damaged. So that needs replacing. So I charge a flat fee for these of £50 for a USB port. The note does say to clean it inside as well, which I'd normally charge £40 for a service. But if I'm inside the console anyway, I'm going to service it no matter what. So I do it for free as part of the job. So I'm going to go to 440 degrees Celsius. Low melt solders for pussies, so I'm not going to use that. And get rid of that little bit of foam off there. starting to loosen up there we go perfect next job clean out the holes right leaded solder so yeah I remove the port first I don't bother trying to use a solder sucker or anything while the ports in situ You don't actually need to remove the solder from the holes. In fact, I'll probably do it without removing the solder because it's faster. Right, so I'm going to grab myself a donor board. Fun fact, this donor board right here is the donor board I used to do a data recovery on a PS4 Pro. That's how I know. So I removed the APU off it. So uh, this board itself was liquid damaged, like very badly liquid damaged. And I took the APU off this board, swapped it for another uh, APU. I might re edit that video into a smaller video and put it back out there as like a throwback. Um, maybe, I don't know, but yeah, that's where that board come from. I've pretty much butchered it now. Uh, I've took like the safe bridge, HDMI encoder, even the HDMI port, and now I'm going to use the USB port. You never know when you're going to need parts, that's why I don't throw any boards away. My brother in law keeps trying to nick them off me, and I keep telling him to bugger off. He wants to weigh them in, and I'll say, No, I'll make so much more money off these boards by stripping them down, even if I have to sit on these boards for a year. Well, five years. I've had this board for about three years. I will use every single part of this board. Right, so, yeah, you'll get a better view of how I'm doing it here. So, just literally heat up from underneath like that. Just keep wiggling it around just to see when it's ready to come up. There we are, and that's done. There we are. So I'm not going to bother cleaning out the port or anything. So there's the, there's the replacement. I'm not going to bother cleaning out the sorry the holes for the port. Um, it's really pointless. I can just drop the port in and it's done. And then just touch up the joints from underneath. It just takes longer to clean out the holes. So I could I could clean them out. I could use a solder sucker and stuff. But what's the point? Let's wait for these holes to flow through. You'll see. You'll see the 
solder drop as it starts to get ready to drop in. And then as long as we get it in line, there you go. It should just drop straight in. That's not actually sitting in fully. Eh? And there it is. I'll just press down on that until it solidifies. And there we go. Job is a good one. From the description you you have, I see that you have fake hacker and real hacker on a T12. When do I use each? I don't use the fake hacker. I'll put it there because it's tried and tested. It does work and it's um, it's actually a decent station. Um, and some people don't want to spend three, four hundred pounds on a hacko. If you can afford it, get a hacko or get you know something of similar build quality. If you can't afford it, like I mean, like not everyone can. If you can't afford it, just get the fake one. They all do the job. Uh, the T12. I use. I don't use the T12 anymore since I've got the hackos. I do use the T12 tips, but I don't use the T12 iron anymore. Um, I gave it away to a viewer. But I only use my hack holes now. I've got two of them. I've got one for the micro pencil and one for the normal. But I rarely use the micro pencil. In fact, I haven't even got it on this bench. Uh, but I'll just put that there just to give people the choice because the fake hack hole works almost as good. Not quite, but it's it's almost as good as the real hack hole. It's basically based off the T12, the fake hacko is, to be honest. It just looks nice. Some people don't want to spend three, four hundred pounds or dollars or whatever on uh, a soldering iron. You know, some people are just doing it for a hobby and stuff, or they're doing it as uh, a side job. So, I'll just put it there to give people the choice, because they have been tried and tested by people who I trust in the field. Uh, Lewis Rossman tried it, and he said it worked pretty well for the price. I use the T12 tips, I don't use the Hakko tips, because they're damn expensive. Trying to make sure I get full coverage on these pads. Beautiful. There we go, solder joints are nice and shiny. Probably not my best soldering job ever, but it's more than sufficient. And that's job done. So I'm just gonna sync up a controller. But I'm gonna try syncing it up from the back. So just to show y'all, it's not synced. It's flashing, not synced up. There we are. Right, we get an orange light. Sinks. Awesome. There we go. Yep, everything's working there. Okay, so let's go to storage. <laughs> no, that's really good. I've just, I've just bought, I've just opened a brand new USB drive. Literally, just took it out. Fucking case has come off. Well done, Philips. Really good design that is. Fantastic design, Philips. Brilliant design, Philips. Beautiful. Awesome. All right. Front USB port one. 
to use the USB device, blah, 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 connect it as extended storage. Uh, hang on. Uh, I'll tell you what, let's disable HDCP. And now I'll connect it up to the capture card. How's that? That's working. Right, okay, so. We get uh, storage. Uh, so I've got to devices, USB storage, select the device. Uh, it's not. It's not actually showing up. I'd need to format it, but it's recognizing the USB on the front port. Let's try port two. It's working. And now let's try the back port, even though I have confirmed it's working. Right, yeah, so that's in the back and it's working fine. All right, well, for now, this job is done. If I do have to fix a disk drive issue, then obviously um, I'll take care of that another time. But for now, this job's done and uh, I'm going to speak to the customer about the disk drive issue, see what they want to do. Um, I'll probably phone them while I'm grabbing the next job, to be honest. But this will be a case that I'll revisit later on or tomorrow or something anyway. So I'm not about to strip this back down now. I've got other work to do. But yeah, for now, that job's done. Um, obviously, customer's going to need to let me know what they want to do about the disk drive. I'll give them a quote for it. I will give them a discount. Obviously, I can't do it for free. It still costs time and money. That needs cleaning, a bit of thermal paste on it. Sarah does that, that's Sarah's job. Uh, yeah, job done.